Hi, I'm Steve Shear from the University of Pennsylvania, and on behalf of the ANA, I'm interviewing Mustafa Shaheen from Harvard University. You've done some interesting work that we have recognized and want to interview for the purposes of putting it on the website. You want to tell us something about what you've done? Thank you very much. Yes, we've been working on a disease called spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA for short. It's a disease, a genetic disease, that affects predominantly infants and toddlers. And it turns out to be the number one genetic killer of infant and toddlers in this country. Uh, we are trying to find novel therapeutic options for this disease. Currently, there is no cure for this disease. In, in the past, most of the uh, progress toward finding a treatment for this disease has focused on increasing the levels of the protein that's deficient in this uh, group of patients called SMN. Uh, we're trying to find alternative treatment options for the infants and toddlers affected with this disease. Of course, the treatment options only come from understanding the disease better. Uh, in the, most of the biology of this disease has focused on the role of SMN protein in the nucleus, in how RNAs are processed by this protein. However, it turns out that in neurons, this protein is also present in the axons and dendrites. So it presumably plays a non-nuclear role in the uh, axons and dendrites of the, of the nerve cells. As a result, we focused on the non-nuclear functions of SMM protein and found that to be a useful uh, project to understand what this uh, protein is uh, doing in the cells. Last year, we had presented uh, that SMM protein forms a complex with another RNA binding protein called HUD and regulates the distribution and expression of mRNAs in neurons. And this year, the project that we are presenting here uh, is based on the understanding that SMM protein also forms a complex with other RNA binding proteins that have to do with microRNA uh, expression and function, such as fMRP and KSR. What we did in this project was to utilize compartmentalized uh, cell culture uh, paradigm where we can separate the cell bodies from the axons and the dendrites. That way we can look at the microRNAs specifically in the axon fraction versus the cell body fraction. And using a uh, PCR-based approach, we uh, screened for 187 microRNAs that are expressed in neurons. And specifically, we found that one of these microRNAs, called microRNA 183, is upregulated when SMN is deficient. By using a compartmentalized cell culture system, we were able to identify microRNAs that are expressed in the cell body and the axon separately. And using this technique and a polymerase chain uh, reaction-based analysis, we identified one microRNA called microRNA-183 as a molecule that's upregulated when SMN is deficient. It turns out that microRNA-183 can regulate the expression of uh, two well-known genes, mTOR and AKT1. Both of these genes have been implicated by our work and other uh, groups' work in the past as playing an important role in axon growth and, and development. So we wondered whether uh, microRNA-183 was directly regulating the expression of these genes and neurons, and we were able to demonstrate that. Furthermore, we asked whether the uh, function of mTOR and AKT were uh, affected by microRNA-183 expression in neurons, and we showed that indeed microRNA-183 suppressed the uh, expression and activity of mTOR and AKT in, in neurons. As a result, we asked whether we could inhibit microRNA-183 and normalize the neurite outgrowth deficits that have been uh, described in SMN deficient neurons. So we took some SMN deficient neurons in culture, inhibited the function of uh, microRNA-183, and saw that the neurite length was normalized in SMN deficient neurons, suggesting that we could potentially use inhibition of this uh, microRNA as a potential target. So obvious questions that come up is, does this happen in mouse models of SMA? Does this happen in fibroblasts or tissues from SMA patients? And it turns out, at least in uh, a severe uh, mouse model of SMA, we see the same increase in microRNA-183 in the spinal cord. And in fibroblasts that we've studied so far in type 1 and type 3 patients, uh, microRNA-183 is also increased, suggesting so, it's a generalizable defect. So I think these are really remarkable results. Uh, I mean, this is a tragic disease that all of us in neurology have seen and, and have been quite, you know, horrified by. And to have any new therapeutic target, I think, represents a remarkable achievement, truly. And the, and, the, and the fact is, is that it works in a mouse model means that it's sort of on a launching pad towards the idea of being um, in a translational pro program. That's our goal, yes. So, thank you very much for your time.